My name is Oshie Noire. On this channel, we uncover the creepiest, most unusual haunted TikToks the internet has to offer for entertainment purposes. <laughs> Please do me a favor and like, comment, and subscribe to the Soul Tribe for your weekly dose of Supernatural coming to you every Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday, baby. <laughs> Thank you for joining me. I appreciate you so freaking much. Y'all are my soul tribe. Tribe is with the Y because the Y is for you. That's because I love you so freaking much. <laughs> Thank you for being here with me, y'all. I appreciate your time per usual. And to all my international supporters, I love you so freaking much. Y'all are like so special to my heart because you don't even live in America and you still spend your time with me, honey. So let me know in the comments where you're from, what your country is, what your continent is, what your whatever. I don't know, honey. Let me know. Shit. Okay. I love you. I appreciate you. And to everyone else, I love you as well. Thank y'all for being here with me. Now let's get into this video. <laughs> Y'all think that's real? How is that? Like, what is that? There was no shadow under the cloud, though, in the water. So, I don't know if that means anything. Y'all think that was real? That was pretty cool, whatever it was. There you go. Happy spooky season, everyone. Cool beans. The internet can be such an evil place. This is my birthday present. I'm so grateful. Her light was surrounded by a lot of darkness. Now, when you see a beautiful couple on TikTok, the first thing that you're not going to think about is murder. Well, this TikTok couple, she would post her boyfriend frequently. The vacations that he bring her on, how nice he is, how good he treat her, the restaurants he take her. She would post her life on TikTok often. She would even post the surprise that her boyfriend gave to her, which was a MacBook. And because of the title of this video, as expected, the reason why this couple goes viral is because of the murder that took place behind this couple. Because what looks so beautiful on the outside, well, on the inside, it seemed like she was covering up a boyfriend's murder. The police reports left more questions than answers. Because investigators found out that she had cleaning supplies on her MacBook. And people called this MacBook the gift for helping with the murder. He saw my raggedy eight-year-old MacBook and replaced it for me. This is my birthday present. I'm so grateful. So the boyfriend was like, you know what? You helped me with my murder by cleaning everything up. So here's a MacBook, sweetheart. Yes. Now, like all of the other cases, yeah. as expected, with this case as well, the deeper that we go inside of this case, you will see how dark and strange it will get. This wild, dark, strange, and mysterious case took place in... In a lot of these neighborhoods, neighbors know everything because of how the houses is set up. If burglaries happen, if arguments is too loud, and fights happen, like neighbors know so much. Well, there was this one following night, this neighbor, he's anonymous, we don't know his name, but he said his dog was just running all around the house, barking, like the dog was very anxious, the dog was very concerned with something, but he didn't know what his dog was concerned about. He knew no intruder was inside of his house. So he told himself, you know what, I'm gonna just go to sleep, and tomorrow, I'm gonna see why my dog is barking outside the window, going crazy around my house. Next morning happened, he looks out his window, and everything is perfectly fine. It's just like off the movies of the beginning scene, when you see this beautiful neighborhood, people walking their dogs, the sunset is out, people mowing their lawn, but then he look at his neighbor, James' house. At first, everything looked normal, and he took note of that. He was like, you know what? Everything is normal. Then he goes back outside. He picks up his little bat dog that I keep barking and brings them outside to go use the bathroom. Then he looks back at James' house. He noticed that the garage is lifted up a little bit. His white car is running inside of the garage. Now, at first, of course, looking at it, perfectly normal. This anonymous neighbor goes back inside of his home and do his morning routine, drink coffee, shower. He take his time doing what he needs to do. Then he goes in his car to leave his home. He looks at James' house again. 
and everything still looks the same. The garage is lifted up a little bit and the car is still running. He has his neighbor's number because he knows his neighbor. So he says, you know what? I'm gonna call him. So he calls his neighbor, but no answer. He calls him again. He's like, come on, James, pick up. What are you doing? He doesn't pick up. At the same time, he's thinking, if the car is running, is he in his house or he's in the car? Is he sleeping? So he gets up out of his car and he goes and walks up to James' garage and his car. The first strange thing that he noticed when he walked inside of the garage that is slightly lifted was the windshield wipers were just sliding, just like off of a horror movie, just sliding back and forth, back and forth. Understand? Like I said, when the anonymous neighbor woke up, it was sunny. People was walking their dogs more on the lawn. But he didn't know why the windshield wipers was going side to side. Was it possible that it was raining last night and he parked his garage and something crazy happened? And his car was just left like it was the whole entire night? This whole situation already, the first couple seconds of him looking at the car was strange. He decides... I did not cut it off. It cut off on its own, honey. So, I don't know what the hell happened to the rest of that story. <laughs> I would like to know what happened, though. What the hell? <laughs> hey, y'all. It's me, the money professor. Come closer, come closer. I want to tell you about an account that millionaires and billionaires have been leveraging for multiple decades to build tax-free riches. Guess what? So can you. <laughs> Seriously, you can't. Watch. It's called an IUL, Uninterrupted Compound Interest. IUL stands for Index Universal Life Insurance Policy, but it's an uninterrupted compound interest. First of all, you're never going to lose a single penny when the market crashes because you are protected by a 0% floor. <gasps> With that being said, this account only allows you to participate in the upside of the market. That's guaranteed money. Third, it allows you to build tax-free retirement income for the rest of your life and leave a freaking legacy for your family. Connect with me now to find out if you qualify. Yes, you have to qualify. Connect with me now. Hit the link. Hey, y'all. I'm the money professor. The government hates to tell us how to create generational wealth, how to grow our money tax-free, and how to get out of debt. But what if I told you life insurance was the answer? Would you believe me? That's why so many of my people stay in poverty and end up working until they die. We run away from the thought of life insurance because we were programmed to think only about death insurance. In reality, life insurance is the only vehicle where you can create generational wealth, grow your money tax-free, and have a retirement plan all in one, as well as life insurance. Don't let the government fool you. Life insurance is for the living. That's why it's called life insurance and not death insurance. Do you believe in reincarnation? I most definitely do. Even if I didn't, if I would have stumbled across this creator's breakdown, I would have definitely changed my mind. Even Dimension Girl, you did that. Found her on Facebook, so make sure y'all go follow her there and I'm gonna tag her below here on TikTok. Okay, let's get like into so it. Okay, so she said, I saw a recent post about a child telling her mother who she was and how she was unalive in her recent past life. Reincarnation shouldn't be a shock to anyone anymore, but I can understand the skepticism. That's a fact. This is a post I did on Suki a year ago. He says, Suki, is that you? Check this out. So I was scrolling my timeline and saw the pictures of the girl on the left by the name of Latasha Harlins. Latasha Harlins was an American indigenous 15 year old who was wrongfully and fatally shot at 15 years old by a 49 year old Korean American store owner in Los Angeles, California on March 16, 1991. Someone in the comments stated that she looked like Sukiana and the resemblance is very striking indeed. So I decided to go take a look. I got to Look chill. at the similarities. Based on what I was taught by my forever mentor, usually when I look at reincarnation, I go and check out the names of the parents. Mostly when the souls reincarnate, mm -hmm. the parents of or the reincarnated soul has the same initials. Lukiana's name is not coincidentally named Des mm. Destiny Lynette Henderson. Her mom or grandmother's name is that. Cynthia Henderson. Latasha Harlan's mother's name is Crystal Harlan. Luki got her name from an Asian restaurant wow. in the Christiana Mall. That was when somebody joked about her tasting like Sukiana. So she said, coincidence? 
Y'all already know how we feel about that word. There's no such thing. So she said, I went to go look at what sign the Chills, moon was baby. in on, on March 16th, 1991. And it was in Pisces. She says, Sukiana was born November 15, 1991. And guess what sign the moon was in? Pisces. Hold up, y'all. It don't stop there. Chill. Then she said, then I went looking for her birth chart. Sukiana is a Scorpio and her south node past life is in Cancer. Latasha's sun sign. Latasha Harlan died on March 16th, which is a seven of diamond day. Sukiana is a five club and the seven diamond is Jupiter to the five club. Five club deals with restless of the mind and emotions. Seven diamond is the millionaire card. The name Sukiana is a six heart which is the earth card to the five club. Six heart is the peacemaker card. It deals with the past life and karmic relationships. They gave the Korean store owner a slap on the wrist. Her soul was not at rest about this. And I imagine no soul would be being fatally unalive mm -hmm. and then seeing their unalive or walk free from the spiritual plane. She took Latasha's life. Tasha spent the block reincarnating on November 15, 1991 to reclaim hers and to finish what she set out to do. Live her dreams, honey. I guess it's okay to say Sukiana made peace with her past and is living the life she was destined to. And you gotta know a little bit about astrology to understand what That's she was talking crazy. about. If you do understand, then you yeah. will know. She did that. I don't know whether it's true or not, but damn, the breakdown really makes you think. Y'all yeah, know I love that. Y'all get in them comments and let me know what y'all think. It's love and light and gratitude for watching. Yeah, I love that too. What y'all think about that? Let me know in the comments. I feel um, definitely possible reincarnation and the numbers is numbering. I don't know nothing about using a deck of cards, you know, and hearts and clubs and all of that. I don't understand that, but... It makes sense, regardless. Okay, I love that. Next video. <laughs> Hello. Hi. We got a call for a noise complaint, and we can hear you guys talking about blood. So we're here. I mean, blood is normal, but. Okay, we just need to check on everybody because it's all over your pants. I mean, yeah, but. Upon arriving at the scene, the officer immediately heard loud voices suggesting a fight outside the flat hinting at a potentially dangerous situation. Responding carefully, the officer approached to evaluate the scene and step in if needed to stop any harm. Who else is here? My ex-boyfriend. Okay. We were in an argument, we were drunk, we are drinking, so. Okay, what was the argument about? Um, not that I can mostly remember most of it, but most of it was more that he was looking at, more like a other female's ass, nothing too big. But. Okay. It obviously turned into something big, but... Okay, so how do you get the cuts on him? I actually don't remember. You don't remember? No. Okay. <laughs> I don't believe it. I don't. You don't? You, no. You, you... I'm trying to fix it. I'm like, it's just so baffled that I'm trying to fix it rather than be too more worried about it. So. Right. Well, it's obviously fresh, so how do you not remember something that fresh? <laughs> I'm, I'm that just so baffled that it's like, that I did it. It was, what? So, it was something like, that I cut him in a way that With he was going to be like that. I think it was a knife. I'm okay. pretty sure. What are you doing with a knife in your hand? It wasn't in my hand. It was just right there. So I was just like, okay, stop. Like, stop. What were you doing with the knife, though? I'm sorry. <laughs> what is that? What is that? That looks crazy. Yo, this little girl so ugly. So we eat not fire crab, nothing new per usual crab. I love this little girl. And she is so cute and so intelligent and wise. I can't wait to get home. So I can take the bath, take some towel and all that go to sleep. You like oh no and watch TV. You like a little old lady, you know that? Okay. What's wrong with being an old lady? You gotta be one someday. <laughs> Your mouth is very smarter. I'm like an old lady. <laughs> like nine, old lady to tell ten. everybody, everybody, anything you want. Yeah. I can't even say nothing to you. I like it. Yeah. Is she saying? 
No, never. It never gave. Because you're looking like you just got froze. It never gave. Ain't even <laughs> eating it right. It's going in my mouth, right? It's my food, right? <laughs> I eat my food how I want to eat it. You hear her? Wrong. <laughs> Very wrong. See, it's too cute. <laughs> The reporter who recorded that video, Kim Dong Chul, was arrested in North Korea after that thing went viral, and he was sentenced to 10 years of hard labor for espionage. And the girl in the video was allegedly found dead a few weeks afterwards, around October 20th, 2010. So Kim was the reporter who actually filmed that interaction on a hidden camera. Obviously, videos from inside North Korea are completely censored. There's almost nothing that shows us the reality of life inside the dictatorship. But this soot-covered woman told Kim that she was working in the fields trying to gather grass to feed rabbits. She also discussed with the reporter that she had lost her home recently and that she had also lost both of her parents and was living on the streets. She also went on to describe the horrific conditions inside of her home country. And this was shocking for the world to see because everybody knew that this is what was happening in North Korea, but I don't think up until this point people had physically, visually seen what was happening. Somehow Kim managed to sneak the footage out of North Korea, but like I said, he was eventually arrested and sentenced to 10 years of hard labor, in part because of this video. And this was widely published across the internet. I'm actually going to play the rest of it for you now. It's really hard to watch stuff. That is so sad. Mm. Next video. So I think I'm getting close to the site that I'm looking for. Um, I did find, this is a neat piece. It's kind of, I don't know if you can tell, but it's got like an orange tint to it. And of course oh. the inside's white or gray. Yeah, that's interesting. That's that color. Um, might have been from the firing process or intentional. I don't know. It's hard to say, but it looks polished. Like the outside looks very smooth. See the shine? That's an interesting piece. All right, which is. Mm, kind of figured I was getting close uh, just based on my maths and what I found. But, so I'm just going to fast forward through this little section I'm just talking about the creek bed and uh, crossing the mud and stuff this waterway this is the one common denominator for sites, especially in central Utah. What the heck? What is this? What? Talk about random shit. Thank you. 
Dolphins. Blankets. Well, that's creepy. That is way creepy. Um, that's a little weird, but it doesn't necessarily mean anything just dogs. yet. Follow Rye of the Desert. It's been here for a while. Hmm. He just touching everything. Is that the body? That is so weird. The wire guitar. I think there's a body wrapped up in, in that blanket buried. Stop. <laughs> right. I'm gonna look. And they zapped his ass out of his clothes. Look around a little bit and see if there's anything else. That's creepy. Alright. Weirdness we find in the desert. You just never know. Never ever know. That's why I don't go. <laughs> next video are you going to get it through your head perfect the only one that sees this right remember john o'keefe was wearing this orange t-shirt underneath this gray hoodie right these are droplets in order to make those perfect little round circles the blood had to drip off of something onto the shirt 
which would make sense considering there's a footprint right here. And if this was the toe of the shoe and this the heel of the shoe, this right here was probably from where the fist was dripping blood on top of him. And let's talk about the jeans. Am I the only one seeing the obvious grass stains? Probably right from when he was dragged across the front yard. And is nobody going to talk about this random stain right here on the ankle? Let's look at where the darkest stains on the front of the t-shirt are. Why doesn't the hoodie have the same stains in the same places? John didn't have wounds on any other part of his body but his head and his arms. I am 100% sure that this hoodie was washed, which is why they didn't find any dog saliva on it. The only stains that really line up are the ones that are on the back of the t-shirt and on the back of the hoodie. But again, why would his outer layer of clothing be lighter than the clothing that wasn't exposed to the open air? How would he have blood droplets on the back of the shirt and the front of the shirt? And don't even get me started on the glass fragments. Girl, calm down. Sheesh, who's she talking about? Go ahead, Boots. Hey, y'all, it's me, the Money Professor. And everybody wants to know, what's an IUL? And I'm going to tell you. So this is you. This is your money. And on average, you take your money and you put it in the bank. And when you put your money in the bank, it's only going to grow at a whopping 0.01%, maybe a 0.001%. And while it's in the bank, the bank is loaning out your money, compounding your money, and making and keeping all of the money. And what you should do is take that money and put it into an IUL. And what's an IUL? It's an Index Universal Life Insurance Policy. So when your money's inside an IUL, It is protected and it's guaranteed to grow on an average of 8 to 10 percent. All right. And so when it's in those accounts, the account grows because it is growing on a compound or uninterrupted compound interest. And when it's protected, it's protected because it has a zero percent floor guaranteed, no losses. Okay. so when the money is in that account, at the same time, it's growing cash value. And when you have that cash value, you're able to spend that money tax free. You can use that money for leverage, such as, you know, college funding, uh, investing in property, or just other cash building assets. You can use that money as income replacement for retirement funding, or even build your own private bank, becoming your own family bank. And at the same time, it's a death benefit. It's a life insurance policy. So this death benefit, you are able to leave a legacy. You also, it comes with living benefits for chronically ill or, you know, critical illnesses. And also it's collateral. You are using this money to pay back this money when you are taking it while you're still alive. DM me more or hit the link in my bio if you are interested in creating your own IUL. Warrants from the recent search connected to Aisha Degree have been made public, and they indicate that authorities believe Aisha is no longer alive. Last week, law enforcement executed several search warrants at multiple properties in North Carolina following a forensic lead in Aisha's case. Warrants have now been made public, and they explain that two of the items found in Aisha's backpack, which was found more than a year after she disappeared, had DNA linking a woman named Anna Lee Deadman Ramirez and a man named Russell Underhill to Asia. According to the search warrants, a DNA sample of hair stem taken from Asia's undershirt appeared to match Deadman Ramirez's DNA. In the search warrant application, investigators wrote that they now believe Asia Degree is, quote, a victim of homicide with her body concealed. And they believe that three sisters of the Deadman family were possibly involved. This includes Anna Lee Deadman, who was 13 years old in 2000, along with her 15 and 16 year old sisters. And investigators noted that because of the Deadman sisters' ages at the time Mm. that Asia disappeared, they believe, quote, adult assistance from their father, Roy Deadman, and their mother, Connie Deadman, would have been necessary in the execution and or concealment of the crime. Following the DNA match, several search warrants were carried out for the Deadman parents, Anna Lee Deadman Ramirez, and mul- multiple properties associated with them. 
And significantly, Roy Dedman's home at 621 Cherryville Road is about 3.7 miles from where Asia Degree was last seen near Highway 18 and Wallace Grove Drive. Roy Dedman's home was actually first searched in February by a drone, but last week it was officially physically searched. Several items were seized from the search of Roy Dedman's home. There are reportedly 29 vehicles registered in his name, and three green vehicles and one red truck were seen at his property in Shelby. At least one of those older green vehicles was seized from the property last week as it resembled a car wanted in connection with Asia's disappearance. Authorities also took a variety of computers, laptops, cell phones, and records from Roy Dedman's home. There was also a human tooth in a plastic bag that was retrieved, but no human remains were found at this property or any of the Mm. other properties. Other properties searched included an assisted living home known as Northbrook Rest Home located in Vail, North Carolina. This facility is owned by Roy and Connie Dedman, and that is where Russell Underhill resided from 2002 to 2004. Underhill is the man whose DNA may be a match with DNA found on Asia's belongings, and he lived in at least two facilities operated by Roy and Connie Dedman at the time that Asia disappeared. He died in 2004, and it's not entirely clear how Underhill was related to or connected to the Dedmans, but Roy Dedman was listed as his emergency contact and investigators determined that they at least knew each other. Anna Lee Dedman Ramirez's home in Charlotte, North Carolina was also searched and authorities seized a BlackBerry cell phone from her home. The last location searched was Connie Dedman's home because she does not currently live at Roy's home on Cherryville Road. From her home, authorities removed two computers, flash and hard drives, a tablet, and various CDs and SD cards. Roy Dedman is denying any involvement or knowledge of Asia Degree's disappearance. Search warrant documents did say that Roy Dedman did not appear to have any ties with Asia or her family. Roy's attorney has asked the community to not jump to any conclusions, asking to let law enforcement do their job and to avoid spreading any rumors. Law enforcement has not come out with Mm. any further information about the Deadman's connection to Asia and what exactly they think happened, but they have said that they no longer believe she is alive. And this is huge after 24 years of Asia's case being cold. Hopefully this will lead to answers for her family and justice for Asia. Justice for Asia, definitely. 24 years is crazy. And that's if this TikTok was made this year in 2024. Okay, goodness gracious. Next video. Signs you died young in a past life. This is your trigger warning. So young can be as a child up to your early 20s. But as a child, you might have been terrified that something was going to happen to you in situations that you shouldn't have been scared of. It can also present as a very paranoid child or teenager. You might be someone that has a bucket list and wants to do everything on it because you feel like there's not going to be enough time to do everything. You almost feel like you're not going to get to live a full life. This usually presents if it was your last lifetime that you died young or you've had multiple lifetimes where you died young. Anyone passing away young is going to be a trigger for most people, but this is something that would impact you for weeks after reading or hearing about it. Each birthday that you celebrate, you feel as a victory. As always, do not get this confused if you have any explanation in your current lifetime. If you do, it basically negates past life stuff. It doesn't mean it didn't happen, but at that point, the evidence is null and void. Hope this helps. Pretty cool, but I know I didn't die young in no past lives, honey. Hmm. Next video. <laughs> the body you occupied in your past life is buried somewhere. Believe it or not, but this is true. Hi, my name is Ganesha and I am a psychic medium. I was told when I was pregnant with my fourth child that I have a family member that left a while ago and they will be reincarnating on Earth, but within my baby's body. I was asked if I could find out who it was, and I was told, no, this is a gift for me honoring my spiritual journey, advancing in my gifts, and showing my gifts to the world, and helping them all heal as well. I was still curious on who this was going to be. She did tell me that she could let me know that the energy was of a grandmother, and I had a few grandmothers that left, so I wasn't quite sure who she was talking about so i connected with all my children in the past and i decided well i connected with them i found out everything about them their personalities who they were and everything why not try it with her i decided to go ahead and connect with my baby girl and she gave me nothing nothing at all so at that point that's when i knew this is something that i am not supposed to know i need to sit back and be patient it was really hard but i decided to go ahead and do that 
I forgot everything that my spiritual friend had told me. It comes the day when I have my baby girl and the energy in the room was amazing. I have never felt any energy like that. It's almost like when she came out, I was missing her. I haven't seen you in so long. You know, where have you been? And I've had three other children and these other children that I've had, I've never felt this type of energy. It's like when you have a new baby, so new, let me learn so much about you. With her, this was like, I know you and you know me and I really, really miss you. Give me a hug. It was so strange and the energy was very strong. So when I decided to finally go ahead and post a picture of, of my baby girl, everyone was saying how angelic, how her energy was out of this world, how they could not explain anything of how, like, who is she? People would say how my great grandmother that she looked like her and they, I would get those things and I'm like, you know, she do. My baby girl was supposed to have been born in December. And this being my fourth child, we thought that she was going to come a little earlier. No, she actually stayed in there longer and I didn't have her until January 3rd. I did not connect the dots at first. As I said, I forgot about what my spiritual friend said. My great grandmother that passed away, that was like a mother to me. She took care of me, everything I knew. She taught me. She passed away in 2015 and it crushed me. <clears throat> when she left this earth, it was like a part of me left. And but she left at 90 years old and I understand I had to accept that this was the way that life worked but ultimately just like many of us I just was not ready I was not attuned into my spiritual gifts or had my awakening until 2018 so I was not aware that I could connect to her because prior to that I was a Christian and we aren't taught those things if anything we are taught to be fear that stay away from those things when I had my spiritual awakening in 2018, that's when it was a game changer. I was able to connect to her and to so many more people. So I was able to connect to my grandmother all the time in the astral realm. Whenever I was ready, I went to sleep. And, you know, it, once you get the hang of this, you could go anywhere you want in the astral world. And my choice was always to go with my grandmother and, of course, some other places, sometimes some past lives or things of that nature. But we could talk about that in a different topic. I started to wonder why she waited to come into January, but I still wasn't connected. It wasn't until everybody else was saying things. Fast forward now, I decided that I wanted to go ahead and connect with my grandmother. I realized I had my baby girl. I haven't saw her in an astral plane in a while when I go to sleep. You know, I haven't talked to her, I haven't communicated her. I needed to talk to her last night. So I'm super emotional because this just happened, literally. I talked to her. I, I went to sleep, set my intentions to talk to her last night, and I got nothing. That never happens with me. Whatever I set my intentions with, I go. I travel. I'm very gifted. I understand how my gifts go. It, I got nothing. So I woke up super emotional and I connected to my spiritual team and asked them, what is going on? Why haven't I spoke to my grandmother? Why haven't I seen her? I need to hug her. I miss her. And they told me, she's right there with you. Well, yes, I know they're all here with me was my thought. And they said, take a look at your babies. She chose to be there with you. I still was not understanding what, she, what they were saying by that. So she chose to be here with me. But so I said, wait, are you saying that she's here physically? They said she chose to be there in a physical form with you. She chose. Then this is when things are getting much deeper because I've never experienced this before in this lifetime anyways. So <laughs> she chose to be here with me and they said to check out your babies. I have a three-year-old and I have an infant. And I said, okay, well, is it my baby boy? And they said, no, which I kind of figured it wasn't him. I didn't feel that type of energy. I said, is it my baby girl? And immediately started to click. My great grandmother was born in January in 1925. She also left this earth in January in 2015. My baby girl was supposed to have been born in December. She decided to wait and stay in the oven a lot longer. And she came in January of 2023. She acts like my grandmother. She gives off the energy. And you know, baby girl has been here before. I immediately started crying because it started connecting. And that's when I started to remember what my spiritual friend said. It all started to connect. And I said, wait, was this her? The person that I needed, the person that had left me and I, I, I didn't know what to do. I feel so lost. Is, is she really here with me? After I got done crying and connecting everything and, and just confirming it, knowing that this is her, I decided to get up and grab my baby girl. When I grabbed my baby girl, I decided to go in there and grab the picture of my great-grandmother. I've never showed it to her before. She's 11 months old now. She just turned 11 months old on the third. I showed a picture not thinking I'm going to get much of a reaction because, I mean, she's a Capricorn. She don't react much. If she don't understand or know what she's looking at, don't expect nothing from her. If you know how Capricorns are, that's it. She's always straight-faced it most of the time. <laughs> so 
immediately when I pulled this picture out, she lights up and she starts smiling. I've never showed her her before. And I'm like, okay. Then she takes her baby hand and she starts to rub against the, uh, across her face on the picture. And she kept doing it. And I'm just like, okay, Anisha, wait. Let's see what's going on. My baby grabs the picture with her little baby hand. And she puts the picture on her mouth and kisses it. At that moment, I lost it. I said, this is my great grandmother. I've been needing a hug. I've been needing a kiss. And you're telling me you're right here. But now it's at this point. So wait, how does this work? Because now you're my baby girl. You chose to reincarnate. You chose to reincarnate right. and come back here with me. You chose to be that gift for me. Do you know how grateful I am? Now I have to get used to it because I know when I go to bed, I can always go and visit my grandmother. I can talk to her when I needed to. She always took me. I've seen some stuff. She taught me to sing stuff. She taught me things physically, mentally, and spiritually when she was here. And she continued to do that when she left. To know now that she continued to come back and reincarnate and be my baby girl and give me the ability to raise her, to take care of her has had me just, I, I've learned this today. I've been emotional, I've been crying all day because I'm very, very grateful. My baby girl is 11 months. She has her personality. She has everything about her. You know, let me know if you like to see some pictures of my great grandmother and some pictures of her. It is my blowing. The yeah. energy and everything is just it's my okay. blowing. This is her. So Yanisha, yes, a body that you occupied searching. in a past life is yeah, here so on earth i am a living so witness my now. great grandmother that died at 90 years old in 2015 in january and she was always also born in january she decided to come back and be my baby girl <laughs> and be born in january again but of 2023 that is so beautiful that is so beautiful. I love that. <laughs> Next video. This is Jocelyn Wildenstein. Some of you may know her as Catwoman. That is what tabloids in the U.S. like to refer to her as. Jocelyn was born in Switzerland in the 1940s. She, so she had happened? a very normal middle class upbringing. She had no kind of extravagant wealth of any kind. In fact, her father worked at a struggling sporting goods store while she was growing up. But at the age of 17, Jocelyn's very humble life would turn into something that was much, much more extravagant. Jocelyn began dating a Swiss film producer and the two eventually ended up moving to Paris together. Their relationship eventually ended up fizzling out and Jocelyn began dating a European film producer. Jocelyn and this European filmmaker were in a relationship for a total of five years and they spent the majority of their relationship exploring Africa together. Jocelyn often would describe Africa as a paradise on earth. Due to the social ladder that Jocelyn had climbed in her two very high profile relationships, she found herself in very elite circles of people. At one point, Jocelyn was on a safari in Kenya where she crossed paths with billionaire Alec Wildenstein. Alec came from a family who were big cat enthusiasts, they were horse racing experts, and they were very high profile art collectors. There was an instant connection between Alec and Jocelyn, and within a year of meeting, they were exchanging vows in a little chapel okay. in Las Vegas. The couple would later go on to have two children together. Within a year of their marriage, Jocelyn began spending copious amounts of money on cosmetic procedures. Initially, Alec and Jocelyn both received his and her eyelid lift surgeries. I've seen her but after that initial procedure, Jocelyn decided she wanted to continue receiving okay. procedures to make her appearance seem more feline. Jocelyn believed that her looking more feline would please her husband as he had a really big love for large cats. The couple also had a pet lynx together and they both believed that the lynx had the most beautiful eyes and she used the lynx as her inspiration for how she wanted to look. Just while married to Alec, Jocelyn spent a total of two million dollars on cosmetic procedures. Alec told Jocelyn many, many times she needed to stop receiving procedures and altering her appearance, but Jocelyn refused. In 1997, Jocelyn walked in on her husband in bed with a 21-year-old Russian model. This led to a DV altercation, which resulted in Alec pulling a weapon on Jocelyn. Alec was arrested for this and subsequently spent the night in jail for this. And as soon as he got out, he filed for divorce against Jocelyn. Go to part two. Okay, we had some good stories today, honey. Yes, we did. <laughs> We had some real good stories today, but guess what? 
You made it to the end of another video. <laughs> ah, I appreciate y'all for being here with me per usual. I appreciate your time. I do not take it for granted whatsoever. I truly, truly, truly do appreciate you. I love you. Keep your heads up high. If you're going through something, just know that it's not going to last forever. And more than likely, it's setting you up for something greater. You just got to be willing and ready to receive and be accepted. Okay? Period. Take what's yours and move on. Go ahead with your business. Anyway, <laughs> make sure y'all like, comment, share, subscribe. It's free. And everybody you know needs to see this, okay? Be nice, be kind. And sharing is caring. So your mama, your daddy, your sister, your auntie, your niece, your nephew, and everybody else, your bestie and your enemy, anybody can get it, period. Okay? <laughs> Thank y'all for being here with me. It's Oshun Amare. My real name is Essence. My middle name is Amare. So now you know. Deuces. <laughs>